crushed rock is vital to the construction industry. It provides a solid foundation for roads, bridges, and buildings, and is an important ingredient in concrete and asphalt mixtures. All of this construction would not be possible without the crushing, sizing, and washing of aggregate stone to meet growing demands. The amount of processing required to produce suitable aggregate depends on the nature of the raw materials and the desired end product. Four functions are required to accomplish the desired result. Particle size reduction with crushing, separating into particle size ranges with screening, eliminating undesirable materials with washing, and handling and stockpiling. Rock crushing is classified by three stages, primary, secondary, and tertiary. A primary crusher receives stone directly from the loader after blasting and produces the first reduction in stone size. The output of the primary crusher is fed to a secondary crusher, which further reduces the stone size. Some of the stone may pass through more crushers before it is reduced to the desired size. Crushers are classified by their method of mechanical energy to fracture the rock. Jaw, gyratory, roll, and impact crushers all work by applying compressive force. Jaw crushers use a fixed and moving plate to crunch the rock similar to a chewing action. Although jaw crushers have excellent mechanical action, they do not handle slabby or plate-like material well and are used less today. More recently, gyratory crushers have become the unit of choice for primary crushing. They are made of a heavy steel frame with an eccentric shaft. The upper part is a cone-shaped crushing chamber lined with hard steel or manganese steel plates called concaves. The eccentric support at the bottom causes the vertical shaft and crushing head to gyrate as the shaft rotates, thereby varying the space between the concaves and the head. As the rock is fed in at the top and moves downward, it undergoes a reduction in size until it passes through the opening at the bottom. To protect it from uncrushable objects and overload, the outer crushing surface can be spring-loaded or the mantle height may be hydraulically adjustable. Cone crushers are used as secondary or tertiary crushers and are capable of producing large quantities of uniformly fine crushed stone. A cone crusher differs from a true gyratory crusher because it has a shorter cone, a smaller receiving opening, and faster rotation at about twice the speed of a true gyratory. Impact crushers use high speed impact force to accomplish fracturing. The impact crusher breaks the stone both by impact action of the impeller striking the feed material and by throwing the material against the internal aprons. These tertiary phase crushers produce a cubical product important to the concrete and asphalt industries. The screening process is based on the simple premise that particles smaller than the screen cloth opening size will pass through the screen and oversized particles will be retained for further reduction or storage. Screens consist of one or more decks of open mesh wire cloth mounted one above the other in a rectangular metal box. The vibrating screens are most widely used in aggregate production, however there are stationary screens as well. The highest efficiency is obtained with a single deck screen. As more decks are added, the efficiency will decrease. After stone is crushed and screened, it is transported on conveyor belts to stockpiles or a washing unit. Here the conveyor belt is transporting the stone across the quarry floor over a football field away. It will be necessary to remove undesirable material by passing the aggregate through a washing unit known as a log washer. The aggregate is fed into the unit at the lower end while a constant supply of water flows into the elevated end. Paddles move the aggregate toward the upper end of the tank while producing a constant scrubbing action. Water is continuously recycled and cleaned with help of a sediment pond that meets environmental regulations. Production rates of crushing plants are expressed as tons of stone per hour. Production along with desired particle size must be balanced in any operation. As stone passes through a crusher, its reduced size is expressed as a reduction ratio or the ratio of crusher feed size to product size. Here the 15 inch feed size and output 3 inch product size are operating at a reduction ratio of 5 to 1. When the difference between the feed size and product size is large, a lot of energy is required, and this may slow production. In a single step process, excessive fines are generated, but there is a limited market for fine material. To minimize waste material and keep production levels high, the degree of breakage is spread over several stages as a means of closely controlling product size. Larger plants operate at 300 tons per hour or higher to keep up with demand. Large portable electric generators are used to supply the energy, and the entire crushing operation can be moved to the next job site within a few days. Many types and sizes of rock crushing and screening plants are used in the construction industry. 
The production of the crushing operation will vary with the crusher size, the type of stone, the feed size, and the size of the finished product. The operation must balance production demands with specific requirements. Large commercial and portable aggregate plants are the vital equipment to make this happen.